the Florida Gridiron Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. Episode 19, Dan LaForest, Coach Hayes from CoachHayesFootball.com. Coach, welcome back. What's up, man? Glad to be back. We in number 19, man. We chopping wood here, baby. We knocking them down. 19 is my magic number, and I am wearing my Poe Little Timmy t-shirt in honor of Coach Hayes Football hitting 1 million views this weekend. Congratulations, my man. Man, I appreciate it. Like I said, 1 million views on our YouTube channel, the Coach Hayes Football YouTube channel. Uh, it's been just a little bit over a year since we started that. And uh, like I said, uh, man, my hat is off to everybody who has clicked on one video, whether it's been one time or just my regular subscribers and viewers. I appreciate everybody. Even if you stumbled upon it, hey, it got us to a million views in a short period of time. So thank you to everyone out there uh, that is a part of that process. Well, not only the fact that you do such a wonderful job, but also a lot of your episodes are showing up on varsity sports network and we appreciate the relationship we have with you and the work that you're helping me with, with the Florida ground report. And there's just so much we're missing coach Daniel tonight. He's off, but that's okay. We got a really big show. Um, we got Sammy Smith, former Apopka star, Florida state star, Miami dolphin, who Miami is now, dolphin, Miami dolphin who is now the director of player a character building at uh, at Ole Miss working with coach Kiffin and in the in the in the coaching staff up there and we've got coach Colin Drafts from Nice High School up in Jacksonville on a really big but hey we had a big recruiting week this week you know we had Brian Smith from, Sport, from Sports Illustrated not 3 weeks ago state the last week of June the first week of July it was going to be bananas with commitments. And we saw a bunch of them. UCF, Florida, Florida State, Miami all had decent commitments. But the surprise was Coastal Carolina came in and got seven Florida commitments on their roster. And I tell you what, Coach Jamie Chadwell knows where to come get his talent, doesn't he? He sure does, man. I mean, like I say, for a program, and Coastal Carolina is on his way up. You know, uh, I believe they've got a big time receiver out of Lake Nona last year. I've, his name escapes me, but uh, uh, Manny Stokes, I believe, is his name, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but anyway, he's at Coastal Carolina. Uh, again, seven guys out of here. That goes to show you if you put the work in, you can grab the talent. They're not going to come just because of the logo that's on the helmet, they're going to come because of the relationship that is being built. And also, man, you know, we, we covered a lot of these uh, um, recruiting things. We know as soon as June 1 happened, like I said, it was a war deployment, man. These kids had an opportunity to get out the house, and they were all over the place. They are now starting to drop their commitments because the official uh, uh, visitation period is about is over. So they're, they can now say, I've seen my four or five schools. I know where I'm going to go. And the month of July is going to be hectic. My phone stays going off. And last but not least, we had two big, I don't want to call, I don't want to call them upsets. They're actually great, but they're upset to a fan base. And I can understand why. Um, you had a big time name here and locally in Orlando area, Mr. Zane Durant, who was trending towards the University of Miami and happened to take his talents to old Happy Valley, man, Penn State. He flipped and went to Penn State and it trended like that, man. Right after he took his official visit, I guess whatever they said or did, he loved it. Now and Coach the next Franklin's, Jacoby, Coach yeah. Franklin's got an outstanding program out. He's done a wonderful job. And, and you can see why that would happen. But, you know, again, everybody comes to the state of Florida, and that's why the Florida Gridiron Report is so relevant. Yeah, man. And the last one, real quick, is Jacoby Spells, man. He was also trending to go head down to Coral Gables. Ended up at West Virginia, huh? Out of American Heritage, ended up playing defensive back at West Virginia. So that goes to show you, man, these guys are putting in work when it comes to the state of Florida recruits. Well, I tell you what, we're on the back end of a hurricane. Hopefully all of our friends on the West Coast of Florida have – gotten through this without any injuries or or loss and our prayers go out to them uh you know it's hurricane season and this is just what happens here uh, and uh you know we've got a big show tonight so we better get ready for it here coach you're watching the florida grid on report right here on varsity sports network and we'll be back right after these messages the florida gridiron report is brought to you by security financial management gators dockside grill the 18 with charles ruttenberg realty and sports thread 
The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? In case he got a hole in one. <laughs> well, that's what I call a rib tickler. And here's something else you'll get a kick out of. Come into Gator's Dockside during Rib Fest and enjoy delicious fall off the bone ribs, char grilled to order, and one of five amazing flavors. For wings, seafood, sports, and ribs, you know where to go. It's Rib Fest at Gator's Dockside. Meet me at the dock. This is Sports Thread, and this is the new free Sports Thread app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout and get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Statewide coverage from the Panhandle to Central Florida to Broward and Miami-Dade down to the Keys. All 22 sports from football, girls and boys basketball, softball, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, even swimming and track. Shows and live streaming broadcasts on various spectrums. Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, and On Demand. 24 seven, seven days a week, only on BSN. All right, welcome back to the Florida Gridiron Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. Dan LaForest, Coach Kyle Hayes, and joining us, a Florida legend, the Sammy Smith, legendary running back from Apopka, Florida, Florida State Seminoles, and first round draft pick by the Miami Dolphins. Sammy, welcome to Florida Ground Report. Hey, man. Thanks for having me, Dan. I know we've been trying to make this happen for a few weeks, and uh, I was super excited when you called me today, and I was really just kind of sitting around doing nothing. And you invited me to be on the show tonight. So I'm just glad that I was available and able to, to join you guys today. Well, you know, Sam, you've got such a, a colorful history playing football in the state of Florida, but you have so much more to give, especially the kids in high school. You know, there's so many messages, so many lessons to be learned from this game that, you know, they don't realize as they get older, the lessons that are really going to come from playing this wonderful sport. You know, Sammy Smith, um, was a parade All-American uh, for USA Today uh, in 1984, went on to Florida State, where he still is number seven on the all-time rushing list at 2,539 yards, has the uh, season record number four on, on the season all-time with 1,230 yards, and number four for game yardage with 244 yards in one game. Drafted uh, by the Miami Dolphins, number nine overall. And the story just continues to go on. Uh, you know, Coach Hayes, this guy's been involved with FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and, and his role with the FCA and, and how he's it's taken him. He is now the Director of Character Development for Ole Miss football and really the whole university. And, and he has such a great story. And, and Sam, we, we can't hear, wait to hear more about that tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, Dan, you know, uh, one of the things I, I believe is, you know, when you get a role and you get a title like, like I have, uh, I believe that you have to have gone through some trying times, right? And been, been tested in order to, to know what it takes to build character, man. I certainly uh, 
am thankful to God that uh, I'm in the position that I'm in, doing something that I absolutely love. And that's walking alongside coaches and athletes and, and helping them to grow spiritually, uh, to be grounded, um, and to, to know that there's more uh, of a focus to life than just the sport that they're playing, right? The sport only lasts for a short time, but man, however long God gives you uh, to be on this earth, man, you want to be in a position to be able to do something productive with your life. And so I'm just thankful that God saw fit to choose me to, to be in these roles that he's given me the opportunity to be in. You know, Coach Hayes, you know, we, we talk about how the game has changed, how the recruiting process has changed, going from high school, um, uh, you know, to the college level over the years. You know, what are some of the things that you learned from FCA when you were involved with it and, and you know, have that conversation with Sammy about, you know, he was actually came when you were coach at Olympia? Yeah, man. I mean, he came to Olympia. First of all, Sammy, again, thank you. I know I did after that meeting, but thank you again, man. His message was so strong. You know, your message was strong. You know, the players really were grabbing hold because a lot of times when I have speakers come in, I'm listening to the speaker, but I'm watching the players because I want to see if they're really accepting and receiving the message. And they were all eyes were on, on the middle of the stage. And so I know you are doing an excellent job at Ole Miss. And by the way, speaking of Ole Miss, the, you got to give a big uh, shout out to my good buddy, man, Mr. Devin, Coach Devin Bush. We oh, yeah. Coached together. Yeah, so we coached together at Flanagan. We kind of grew up together, man. He's a little older than I, but I'm not going to leave, leave that out. But anyhow, um, <laughs> I mean, you got a, you have, a, a, like I said, a great story. And you just said something that was really profound that it's hard to build character if you yourself have not gone through things. Um, it's kind of the yin and yang of life, right? You don't enjoy the sun without the rain. So you have to be able to explain to people. And the only way you can really get that message across is by going through some of those trials yourself. So that's that's awesome, man. And I know you're doing a great job with it. But now to answer your question, Dan, I had to get that out of the way. But to answer your question now, recruiting has changed a lot. Um, and I know that that's a big part of it. I know there are a lot of kids, too, that are believers. And that's a big part of their um, – that's a big part of their recruitment. I did a young man. His name is Zachary uh, – Christian Zachary, excuse me. Big time power five guy end up going to Liberty University, which is a Christian school in Virginia, just because of his faith. So how does that play a role in the recruiting process for you guys at Ole Miss? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's funny that you mentioned uh, Liberty because I came here with Coach Freeze. Coach Freeze brought me here uh, from Florida. So I had an opportunity to work uh, with him for a year. And uh, man, you know, you just want to be available. You have a lot of these kids, man, that come from uh, backgrounds where they, they've been involved in, you know, in the church and their families. It's important to their families. And, and so, you know, on recruiting visits, uh, coaches know these kids. They know the families that uh, are concerned about their, their child's growth, you know, their son's growth spiritually and, and concerned about him staying grounded and rooted in how they've raised him. And uh, so that's where I come in, you know, whenever I'm uh, asked to come and, you know, go to a dinner with a family, you know, that's on a recruiting trip to, to share what I do here and, and my role and how I'm going to be that, that extra dad here for the kids outside of the football, you know, and to be able to help them navigate through really secular campuses. And uh, so I'm involved as much as I can be in the recruiting, in the recruiting I absolutely love, you know, visiting with families and visiting with kids and then uh, being that outlet, you know, when, once that kid gets to campus to be able to help him uh, transition, you know, from leaving home and coming to college and all the things that will be thrown at him, you know, for his, you know, school and uh, meetings, having to go to practice, you know, it's not an easy transition. So that's my role is just to be here, not just for the players, but also for coaches. You know, Sammy, you brought up a good point is the role of coaches has really changed greatly over the years. And you got to play for one of the greatest football dads ever in Bobby Bowden, mm -hmm. uh, a man of faith, a man of character and a man of longevity. You mm -hmm. know, what qualities did you learn from Coach Bowden at, you know, during your time at Florida State? 
Well, I can tell you this. Uh, I've learned more from Coach Bowden since I left Florida State than I did when I was there. And that's, that's just being truthful. You know, he's been such a rock for me. And prior to me, you know, taking this role at Ole Miss, Dan, uh, he was one of the ones that I sought out to ask, you know, what does that look like? You know, man, I'm comfortable here in Florida, uh, working for the FCA here. I had a facility there in Lake County that I was training kids. I was doing something that I love, you know, speech, uh, teaching speed and agility and using that platform really to be able to <laughs> kind of co-mingle FCA with, you know, the opportunities I would have to train kids. and. Uh, Coach Bowden's advice to me is said, he said, Sammy, you know, God's not concerned with your abilities. He's concerned with your availability. And if he's called you to go to Ole Miss to work with those coaches in football, the biggest thing that you can do is just make sure that you're available and allow God to use you. And so that's something that stuck with me. And if you've heard Coach Bowden speak, he's probably said that sometimes at, you know, his speaking engagements. And uh, that would, I say, would probably be one of the most profound things that he's told me as a coach. The Florida Gridiron Report is brought to you by Security Financial Management, Gators Dockside Grill, The A-Team with Charles Ruttenberg Realty, and Sports Thread. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? In case he got a hole in one. <laughs> well, that's what I call a rib tickler. And here's something else you'll get a kick out of. Come into Gators Dockside during Rib Fest and enjoy delicious fall off the bone ribs, char grilled to order, and one of five amazing flavors. For wings, seafood, sports, and ribs, you know where to go. It's Rib Fest at Gators Dockside. Meet me at the dock. Hi, I'm Angel Krausen and I'm with the A-Team of Charles Ruttenberg Realty. We're located in delightful downtown DeLand and we service all of Central Florida. Our team is here to serve you for all of your real estate needs, whether you're buying, selling, or looking to invest. There is no time like the present to sell your existing home and buy your new one with the A-Team. Call me, Angel Krausen, so the A-Team can deliver your dream today. This is Sports Threat, and this is the new free Sports Threat app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout and get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Statewide coverage from the Panhandle to Central Florida to Broward and Miami-Dade down to the Keys. All 22 sports from football, girls and boys basketball, softball, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, even swimming and track. Shows and live streaming broadcasts on various spectrums. Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, and On Demand. 24-7, seven days a week, only on BSN. I have to say this about Coach Bobby Bowden that, you know, when he speaks, everyone listens. You know what I mean? I think that is huge and and that, that's something that I will, I will remember as well. You know, it's not about what you, you can do is your availability. And I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, Sammy, you talked about working with the FCA in Lake County. How did that process happen where you ended up in Oxford with the position you're in now? Well, you know, I, I, again, Dan, I, I was just talking about being available, right? 
And I had a gentleman from Ocala, Florida, uh, had reached out to me and asked me if I would be willing to uh, speak at a men's conference at First Baptist Church of Ocala. And I had a really busy schedule, but I made time to go and be a part of that event. Well, lo and behold, when I, I'm done, a very good friend of mine now, Terry Crawford, who's an old Miss grad that went here in the 60s, uh, followed me out to the, the car. You know, after me spending time talking with folks after the event, he followed me out and we talked and he says, man, would you be interested in coming to Ole Miss to speak at an FCA breakfast next year? And I said, yeah, I'd absolutely love to do that. Well, he hands me the brochure. He had just left the breakfast like a week or two prior that they had had in March. And on that brochure was Pastor Ken Smith. Ken Smith was the MC of that breakfast. He had Chad Kelly and uh, his uncle, uh, Jim Kelly. You know, Jim Kelly was, you know, fighting, you know, cancer at the time. Right. And Chad, yeah. was, Chad was the quarterback here. Well, when I saw the brochure, I said, man, Ken Smith was my chaplain at Florida State. I said, Ken Smith gives the FCA and supports me here in Central Florida. So it was just one of those things that just kind of snowballed. And, and he says, well, I'm going to call and, and make sure they, they don't have a speaker for next year and see if we can, you know, get you on the docket and book you. Well, well, long story short, about three days later, I'm getting a call from a Mississippi number, and I know no one in Mississippi. So I let it go to voicemail, and it's Hugh Freeze. And he's leaving me a message asking me to call him, and I didn't know who Hugh Freeze was, you know. And so I called, and this, this gentleman's offering me the opportunity to come here and work with his football team. And I'm like, where, where'd this come from? Right. And uh, come to find out that he had talked to Ken Smith and, you know, Terry had went and asked him about me speaking and Hugh tells Terry, I need a, I need a chaplain. I don't need a speaker. Do you think Sammy would be interested in coming here and serving in that role? And uh, that's how I ended up here, man. It was a struggle. I didn't really want to leave Florida. I was preparing for Ole Miss playing Florida State in Orlando that year. I was putting together my second annual uh, big uh, dinner that I had for my company. I had had uh, Charlie Ward the year before. And God just kind of showed me that he had work for me to do here. And uh, I can say I reluctantly came and, you know, packed my bags a couple of months later. And me and my family moved here. And it's, it's been one of the best moves I could have made, man. This this town of Oxford, this little college town has been such a blessing to us. Um, you mentioned it off camera that I went back to school after 31 years. And so a year ago, May of 2020, I graduated from Ole Miss. And my wife, this past May, just graduated from Ole Miss. My son is in a senior year in mechanical engineering here. So um, it's just been a great move, man, and we've been blessed beyond measure by making that move and following God's calling. So, you know, I, I think Coach Hayes is going to agree with me. we got to ask you, what's it like being around Lane Kiffin? Coach Kiffin is cool, man. You know, I've, I've had, again, one year with Coach Freeze, and then I had Coach Luke for three years, so you got transition. You know, I've been here four years, and I, I, I'm on my, my third coach. Uh, but, man, he came in. He's got a lot of energy. Um, I really like his offensive mind and, 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 and the excitement that he brings to the, to the field. And um, the players seem to really love playing for him, man. And I think he's uh, building a great, a great staff here. Um, not, I mean, I'm on Florida high school sports show, so I got to get a plug. Kids, come, come visit Oxford, Mississippi, because if you come here, you probably won't want to go back home. Uh, it's a great place, a uh, great bunch of coaches, and Coach Kiffin is a really neat guy to work with and to uh, help navigate, you know, to building a championship program here at Ole Miss. You know, Sammy, one of the things that Coach Hayes and I started out the program tonight with is talking about this new name image likeness uh, rule that's really, over the last week, has just exploded. And one of the things that came to mind what for me was 
Sammy Smith, Deion Sanders, and all the cast of characters in the late eighties with Florida state, what that would have looked like in Tallahassee. I mean, the seminal rap would have gone gold. <laughs> well, you know, it, 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 it's, it's in hindsight, you look back and you kind of wonder what could have been and man, how would you have been able to, uh, you know, be compensated and to, 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 um, you know, earn money and stuff off of your likeness and, and, and the way you play. But at the end of the day, um, I'm just really curious to see how this is going to all play out, Dan. Um, I was thinking about it after we talked earlier today that, man, you got professional football players that don't even have endorsements. <laughs> so where's all these endorsements going to come from for these kids? And I, I just would hate to see kids get uh, too excited about, you know, things like that because, you know, I, in my opinion, it's going to be very few that, you know, get opportunities to do that. And like we said earlier, man, my whole prayer for these young men and athletes in general, I mean, it's going to be across the board on, on all sports, is that they will keep the main thing the main thing, and that's that they get an opportunity. God's blessed them to come to college to get an education, first and foremost, to get a degree, right? And then to be the best athlete that they can be if they have aspirations of going on to the next level. And if we'll be real here, I think it's less than 2% of high school athletes, football players, that even have a chance of, of, of making it to play, play professional football. So if you're smart, you'll understand that, man, I got a four, four or five year window here to go and get a quality education that will last me for the rest of my life. Yeah, man. I, it's funny you say that you brought up, brought those things up and I actually did a show about the, the NIL for the name, image and likeness. And a lot of aspects have been brought up about it. I'm not sure if you can speak on this from the collegiate level, but I think there's still a lot of unknowns when it comes to the NIL. Um, you know, these players are running out and they're trying to, I guess, solicit sponsorships or whatever. It's crazy. But then do they really know it's a business? Do they know what contracts look like? Do they know mm -hmm. about taxes? Do they know about structure? You know, one of the guys brought up on my show was, man, what if a guy ties him into a six-year deal? It carries over into his NFL. These players are thinking today and not about tomorrow. So there's a lot of things that go into that. So um, can you, if you can, I don't know if, if not, but what is it from the collegiate level or maybe even from that staff has done when it comes to those players uh, in the sponsorship deal and maybe information? Well, I haven't sat in any of those meetings. I actually been kind of, this has been my uh, time off, uh, but they yeah. have had meetings and they're, they're really trying to be uh, proactive, you know, and guide these uh, young men and women um, on rules and, 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 and how to do things the right way, man. And really uh, to set themselves up uh, for success. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll just go back to, you know, in my opinion, if you're someone that uh, a company wants to market their product, you won't have to go looking for them. <laughs> They'll come looking for you. So, again, man, keep the main thing the main thing. You know, uh, you're here to get an education. Uh, you're here to uh, perform at a high level in your sport. Um, and, you know, if you have an opportunity that you can capitalize on that, then I'll be it, you know, do it, but make sure you're doing it in the right way. And like you said, I think Dion, I read what Dion Sanders kind of commented on that uh, here recently about knowing the tax ramifications, knowing all the things that come with, you know, making money, because this is going to be the first time, like he said, that some of these kids will have to deal with Uncle Sam, you know. It's hard not to be a rookie in the NFL, isn't it, Sam? <laughs> exactly. So um, it's going to be interesting, man. I'm, I'm really uh, just kind of, you know, hanging around the sidelines, just kind of looking to see how this all is going to play out. And I hope that it's uh, an environment that uh, these kids will be able to navigate through but also be able to keep focus, man, on the main thing, you know, and that's, that again, is to, I can't reiterate it enough. 
to get an education. That's why you come to college is so that you can have a career after you leave college for the rest of your life till you retire. Coach Hayes, you got anything uh, more here for Sammy? Yeah, man, I just want to say this, man, as a Dolph fan, right, a D-O-L-F-A-N, man, I want to say thank you, man, for your contributions to my beloved Miami Dolphins. And I do want to say this, man, believe this or not, uh, you you know this, but a lot of maybe our viewers don't realize that how people uh, remember things. I remember when you broke or you got your first 100-yard game at the Miami Dolphins. I was actually sitting mm -hmm. in the stands. It was kind of, you tell me if I'm right or wrong, it was an off-tackle play, not a sweep, maybe a power or something towards our sideline, towards the Dolphins sideline, mm -hmm. maybe around the 40, between the 40 and 50-yard line, somewhere up in there. I may be wrong, but I was a little bit younger. But I remember <laughs> that, man, and the crowd went nuts. 33, first 100-yard game. And I was sitting on about the 45-yard line, about six seats back with my godfather, man. And I'll never forget you sitting on the bench and everybody dapping you up and hitting you mm -hmm. up and congratulating you, man. So well, I don't man, know if I was right or wrong about the yardage and the play, you know, but but I remember that that instance, man. Man, those were some great times. Uh, I created some lifelong uh, friendships that last today. I actually was on a call with uh, Mark Higgs here a week and a half or so ago and Farrell Edmonds, uh, we've maintained uh, contact. Uh, Louis Oliver, you know, we communicate off and on. So, uh, man, it's just been such a blessing. And uh, to have that opportunity, I really appreciate it. And, and uh, man, I'm just trying to, uh, to pay it forward uh, from the knowledge that I've gotten, you know, through life and, and in my journey to hopefully be able to help some young men out uh, along their way. That's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you. I tell you what, Sam, Thanks. we really appreciate all the work that you've done for the youth and, and what you continue to do. Um, being being a, a man that 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 preaches God's word and and gives these kids a little extra guidance. And uh, we hope you'll come back here in the near future and 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 continue to uh, to help a lot of the, the kids here in the state of Florida um, realize what their potential really is. Well, guys, we got to take a break. Coming back after this break, we got Coach Colin Drafts from Nice High School. You're watching the Florida Ground Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. This is Sports Thread. And this is the new free sports threat app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout. And get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Welcome back to the Florida Grid on Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. We got a treat. Dan LaForest, Coach Kyle Hayes, and for the first time, the Nice Panthers head football coach, Colin Drafts. Colin, welcome to the Florida Ground Report. Appreciate you guys having me, Dan. I uh, look forward to talking some Panther football and, and all things uh, Florida football. So I'm pumped about it, ready ready to go. i tell you what's exciting is, you know, you have had such a outstanding coaching story. You know, you've, you've been coaching. You, know, you played at the college level. You've coached around Central Florida. Now you're in North Florida, you know, what was your journey? You know, how did you get to, to Jacksonville and now the head coach of, you know, historically one of the greatest programs in North Florida? 
Yeah, it's definitely been a, a, a long, you know, journey here and an interesting one. And, and definitely, I, I have to say, you know, through my football story ever since playing and coaching, I've really been lucky and blessed to be put in multiple you know, situations with uh, to play under great coaches and, and to play with great teammates. And then when I got into my coaching career, uh, more of the same to coach alongside a bunch of, you know, awesome coaches and to, to be able to learn from them and have great players that, that play hard for me, you know, throughout the years. Um, you know, I'm from Beaufort, South Carolina, uh, which is where I was born and raised. Uh, my dad was a longtime high school basketball coach, athletic director, and history teacher. So as long as I, you know, could ever remember, I knew that I wanted to be a coach uh, and a teacher at the high school level. I was lucky enough to, to know that right away. Um, you know, I really come from a basketball family. Uh, I've got an older brother who played basketball at Charleston Southern. My dad played basketball at the College of Charleston, and my uncle played basketball at the University of Georgia. Um, and I did play basketball growing up, but but always just veered more towards a game of football. You know, just that uh, that physical uh, part of the game and the, the raw emotion and Friday night lights. I was always drawn to that. So you know, played uh, played basically quarterback my whole career. Played uh, high school at Battery Creek, which is in Beaufort, South Carolina, and then played uh, quarterback at Charleston Southern uh, from 2003 to 2006 under the under a guy named uh, Jay Mills, who really was the first one to put Charleston Southern on the map. You know, before I came in with him, I was one of his first recruits, and he had been, previously been the offensive coordinator at Harvard. And he came down and, you know, sold me and a bunch of local guys, uh, you know, that we were going to do something different to be the first, you know, to kind of win some football games at Charleston Southern. And we bought into it. And, and that's exactly, you know, what we were able to do. Um, and, and backtrack a little bit because it, it plugs into my coaching story, too. But one thing that I was very lucky uh, to be able to go through early on in my playing career is being a part of teams that historically had not been very good and being willing to change that. I think that really not, I think I know that shaped me into the coach I am today and not to, you know, get too corny about it, but really kind of shaped me into the person I am today too. Cause I was, I don't know why it worked like this, but I was always kind of on the under underdog team. Even when I think back to my pop Warner days, uh, but playing at Battery Creek, we were, you know, historically, they had never been any good. And then my junior and senior year, we were able to, you know, make the playoffs and make a little run into the second round both years, which was pretty neat to, to be able to accomplish that. And then, you know, when I signed on to play for Jay Mills at, at Charleston Southern, the program was about 15 years old. Uh, this was 2003, and they had never even had a winning season. Uh, but I, you know, again, I wanted to kind of – you know, be the guy, be a part of a group of guys that could come in and do something that hadn't been done before. And uh, Coach Mills played myself and a bunch of uh, of the freshmen that first year. He, he played us right away. You know, we took our lumps. We went one and eleven that first year. And I kind of <laughs> I remember thinking after that season, going like, "Man, did did I make the right call here?" Because we were getting thumped. You know, we were the the doormat of the Big South Conference. I remember my first game, we played our biggest rival at the time, the Citadel, and uh, they had uh, Willie Sims, if you remember that name. I think he coaches at FAM now, right? Of course, everybody knows that name, right? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it was him. He was a, he was a transfer from Clemson. He had played quarterback at Clemson. He transferred to play his last year at the Citadel, and I think they beat us like 65 to 10, and it was brutal, you know. But, uh, you know, I learned a lot you know, about myself that year and, and what it really took to be, uh, to play, you know, division one college football. And, uh, you know, we went five and five, my sophomore year, seven and four, my junior year beat coastal Carolina in the final game of the season to win the big South conference championship, uh, which was the craziest game that you probably never, never heard of before. If, if, we, if we got time, I'll have to tell you about it. Um, we ended that year on a five-game winning streak, and then we won our first nine games uh, my senior year in 2006. So we were on a 14-game winning streak and, and cracked the top 25. Uh, just missed the playoffs that year. We fell late to Liberty and Coastal, and it's funny to look back on that now because now Liberty you know, and Coastal 
I mean, top 10, top 15 FBS caliber programs now with two of the hottest coaches in the country. And it was only, you know, only 15 years ago that, you know, they were getting 10, 15,000 people out of game, maybe. And they were one double A in the big South yeah. and, and how times have changed. Uh, so to be able to accomplish that through my college years uh, molded me into the type of coach and, you know, made, uh, you know, when I had decisions to make on what jobs to take and whatnot, uh, having been the underdog and having been through that, that's kind of how I, you know, navigated through my coaching career as well. Um, and I can kind of delve into that if you want me to, but I can only talk about my playing career, but, um, definitely the theme of my playing career, at least through college was definitely finding myself in, in underdog situations and being able to, you know, rally together with my teammates and, and, and make things happen. You know, your time in, in, in the professional circuit in arena ball, you know, yeah. it, it's such a different offensive dynamic. Was right. there any influence there that kind of you carried over to, to your high school coaching at all? Yeah, I get that question a lot. And, and to be honest with you, zero, absolutely none. There's not a ton of translation uh, schematically from the arena football game to the outdoor game at all. Um, it's Sandlot almost, did it? Yeah, it, it well, it, a little bit. And, you know, I think what I one I learned a lot through those years, but I think it really made me value relationships even more so than I would have had I not played arena football. And that's kind of a twofold answer because, one, I made some really strong relationships over the years. Matter of fact, I have two assistant coaches that coach with me at Nice High School that were both on the first arena football team I ever played for all the way back in 2007 and all the way out in Washington State on the West Coast. You know, so we've known each other for 14 years now, and here we are, you know, a world away almost, you know, more than a decade later, coaching high school ball, you know, in the trenches of one another, you know, on Friday night. So that's neat. And then also, too, you know, a lot of people talk about it, but the higher you get up in the game of football – the more of a business it really is. And, uh, you know, the Arena Football League is not the NFL, but it is a business. There's an owner, and the owner's playing, you know, paying coaches and playing, you know, uh, excuse me, paying the players, and they want to return on their investment. And, and that, you know, unfortunately is really what it's all about. So I kind of saw the other side of things a lot through my seven, eight years of playing Arena Football that towards the tail end of my career made me go, you know what? I think I'm done as a player. I've had enough of this. My, you know, I've had a good run at it. You know, I started playing tackle football at six years old. I, I finally hung the cleats up at 28. So I got to play the game for 22 years, never had a major injury. And I was at the time too, I was already coaching high school football, you know, because arena football league was in the spring. So I would fly off and play for you know, whatever random team I happened to be playing for in the spring. And then I would go back in the fall and coach high school ball. And towards the end of my career, I very quickly realized I have way more passion in me to coach now than I had to play. So I was thankful that it was an easy transition for me because a lot of players, man, you, you, you guys know this and you see a lot of, a lot of times with former NFL guys, our identity gets so wrapped up into being a football player when you finally stop playing, if you don't go into coaching, you, you don't know who you are and you don't know what to do. And I never was faced with that dilemma. Uh, so I'm thankful for that, though. You know, Coach Hayes, that's that's something that that's always kind of funny about playing the game of football. The longer – you know, you always ask a kid, why do you play football? I love it, Coach. Right. Hang on to that feeling because every year you play, you lose a little bit of love. <laughs> you know, every level you go up and all of a sudden it is a business. Right. You know, yeah. isn't that right, Coach? That's right, man. It's also every day you play, it's also a little bit harder to get out of that bed every morning. Right. Uh, even or not, man. But uh definitely, and, and it's funny you say that, right? Because as you said, as you as you mapped out your career, you realize, you know what, my passion maybe for throwing the ball may be not as big as it is for teaching somebody else how to throw the ball. Yeah. But I tell players all the time, guys, and I don't call it a plan B. I could, you know, people, oh, well, if you get hurt, what's your plan B? No, I don't even want to wish that. I call it your retirement plan because you're going to have to retire at some point. Even Tom Brady, 20 something year career plans on retiring at 45, but it, the competitive nature in him, when he wakes up the next day after he retires, he's going to have to do something. 
at right. 45 mm-hmm. years old. What is that? And right. so whether it's coaching or commentating or some business, whatever venture that he's had to do something. So I always try and gear players to understanding not what plan B is, but what is your football retirement plan? You know what I mean? Because, you know, I, I'm I'm superstitious in such things like, you know, this coach when we call guys out for for uh, um for for positions and stuff pregame, you know, you call our kickoff team and people run out, but you don't want to say, hey, this guy got hurt. We always say, hey, he broke a shoelace, you right. know, because you just don't want to talk yeah. that way. So that's why I come up with the retirement plan. But anyhow, I say that to say that I'm glad you said that. So the viewers, especially some of the young guys that's watching this, understand that there is a day where you hang the cleats up, whether you want to or not, they're going to be put up. And what is that? What is your retirement plan? And so I'm glad you mentioned that. I really appreciate it. For sure. There's, there's definitely, there's, there's always an expiration date on it. And uh, we bring in, I try to do the best I can to bring in as many outside speakers, uh, you know, in the community that have played, you know, at a high level to come speak to our team. And they almost always mention that as well. And they and they all they, they also will mention that even the guys that have played in the NFL, that the times that they remember and the times that they really love the game the most, a lot of times is at the high school level. You know, it's it's a different feel. Uh, like we talked about it before, it's not so much a, a you know a business anymore. Um, you know, so I try to remind our guys as much as possible that right now. You guys are living the dream and you don't even know it, you know, and to kind of soak that up and to take advantage of every opportunity and the blessing that we all have to to play the game of football. You know, Coach, we talked about this earlier on in, in the segment, but, uh, you know, Coach Jamie Chadwell at Coastal Carolina has really been on a warpath down here in the state of Florida. And he right. nabbed one of your guys here this week. Tell yeah. us about the Nice Panthers, your schedule for this year, and some of the yeah. guys you're excited to go to war with. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, the first one I'll, I'll talk about, you know, Coach Chadwell, uh, you know, I, I mentioned before off camera, but I've, I've got history with him. I've known, you know, Jamie since uh, 2004. He came on my second year when I was a player at Charleston Southern as, as the wide receivers coach and the recruiting coordinator. And we, uh, I, I remember back then, but we all loved him. Everybody loved him. He was a great coach. He was a player's coach. And we knew that one day that he was, you know, probably going to be big time. And so here we are again, 15 years later, he's now the head coach, uh, one of the hottest FBS, you know, growing programs in the country. Um, And he's always done a phenomenal job recruiting Florida. Um, Even when he was the head coach at Charleston Southern, I remember him coming down, you know, I think at the time I was the offensive coordinator at West Orange and he came down, you know, with the whole staff and they were going through Orlando and just the type of guys that they were bringing in, they got a couple of dudes from Apopka in 2015, 2014, 2015, uh, that went a couple of D linemen that went up there and just killed it, man. And I remember having to coach against those guys thinking, man, they're pulling those guys up to Charleston Southern. So we did a great job. But uh, anyway, one of our one of our top prospects, one of our best players is, is a uh, 2022 uh, tight end kid, kid named Grant Stevens. Um, you know, he, hey, he's the real deal. He's six foot four, 225 pounds. Um, he looks like that, um, you know, he's already a, you know, a junior in college I mean, he's put together, you know, big tree trunks for legs, uh, phenomenal player, you know, dynamic. He can, you know, split them out and play wide out, you know, put his hand in the dirt and be physical. Um, and he had multiple, you know, he, he had over 20 offers. I don't know exactly how many he had a couple power five offers. He had Georgia tech. Uh, you know, he had Virginia Tech, um, you know, he had uh, basically narrowed it down to, to UCF, uh, Coastal Carolina, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, you know, schools like that. But uh, he felt like that, that Coastal Carolina was the, was the best fit for him. And I can't blame him. I mean, Coach Chadwell, uh, Malcolm Dixon, who's a tight ends coach there that played quarterback at Charleston Southern for Coach Chadwell. They did a phenomenal job recruiting him, just made him feel at home. Um, and a lot of people don't know it, but I'm pretty sure that Coastal Carolina has the number one ranked tight end in the country right now, uh, like draft eligible tight ends. Like they're going to have the first guy taken to the draft. So I think that that really helped, uh, you know, when Grant was looking at that, he's like, man, I could go, you know, maybe play a little bit early, but play behind one of the top tight ends in the country, you know, play for a, a team that finished top 15, top 20 in the country, 
go up and play on the teal turf in, in Myrtle Beach and just have a blast, you know. So I'm excited for him. Um, I, I really am. But, um, you know, so he's one of our guys. Uh, a week ago, we had our, our starting left tackle, uh, Sam Deck, 6'5", 265 pounds, committed to Army, West Point. Uh, he had same thing over 20, 20 offers. He had all the service academies. He had Army, Navy, and Air Force. And uh, he had kind of already narrowed it down to those, those three schools. He's that type of kid. Uh, he's in JROTC at the high school, you know, high GPA, uh, just a, he's a phenomenal kid, one of my favorite players. And uh, so he visited all three schools and, and pulled the trigger last week. So he's going to be making that commitment, obviously, not only to, uh, to go up there and play football, but as you guys know, you know, to serve his country, you know, as well. And it just, it speaks volumes, you know, about, you know, him and, uh, and the type of kids that, that make that commitment. It is bigger than football. It's character, uh, coach. It's character. More about Nice. So I'm going into my third year, uh, you know, as the head coach at Nice High School. We've got, uh, and, I, and I'm, you know, I'm extremely confident about the, the caliber of, of uh, players that we have coming back. You know, I feel good about the talent, but I feel most confident about, uh, you know, the fact we have 35 seniors coming back. And, yeah, that's a lot. And that's about as many as you can get. And for the first time, I really feel – you know, firm and 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 the stance that we that at this point, you know, we we the, the culture, you know, has been solidified. The foundation has been laid. At least what my expectations are as the head coach, what I want our program to look like, what what the expectations are for the players, and that finally we have a player led program. Uh, so so I feel really good about that. You know, the type of kids that we have coming back, how hard they've worked. Um, you know, oddly enough, even though I'm going into my third year as a head coach at Nice, I've never had a full off season. You know, so when I first took this job, uh, excuse me, two years ago, so it was basically May of 2019 when I accepted the Nice job. So I was still living in South Carolina. I had previously been the head coach at AC Florida High School, <clears throat> excuse me, which is in Columbia, South Carolina. So I was commuting back and forth that first year to make spring football work. So I literally, you know, had my teaching job in Columbia. I was there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I would shoot down to Jacksonville. We would have practice Wednesday night, Thursday, and Friday. And then I'd come back. And I did that for four weeks straight. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Exactly. So we had a makeshift spring football my first year. Uh, you know, those summer months flew by. And before we knew it, we were in that 2019 season, and it just, you know, it, it was a struggle. You know, we had, um, as any head coach will tell you, the, the toughest thing to do when you come in is to get those older guys to buy in. You know, those seniors that have been there, they know things being, you know, their way or a certain way for three years. And here I come in, a completely different dynamic and type of coach, you know, that had previously been at Nice before. Um you know, not, not, not saying better, but just different. You know, things are different. We all have our ways of, of, of doing certain things. So that was probably the biggest, uh, you know, struggle uh, it, on top of the fact that we were in one of the toughest 8A districts in the state. I think we had a top five as far as schedule ranking or strength of schedule. We were in the top five uh, in the entire state, you know, 2019 and 2020. Well, Coach, we got about a minute left. You've got a yeah. big camp coming up here in Orlando, the Orlando right. Shootout, quarterback shootout right. on July twenty right. fourth with one of our buddies, Lil Wood. Yeah. Tell us about that really quick, and and some of the coaching support you're going to have at that camp. Yeah, so the Orlando QB Shootout was a camp that I started back in two thousand thirteen. I think it was the first year I did it. I had just wrapped up uh, playing arena football for the Predators, and I was coaching, and I wanted to put on something you know, for the kids in the area to come out first and foremost to, to get quality coaching, you know, from local quarterback trainers and coaches in the area and then to compete too. You know, that was kind of a rot at the same time. The lead 11 was getting big in the opening. So I figured why not kind of do a mini version of that in Orlando. Um, and then it was 2018 was the first year that I partnered up with Low Wood, which I know you've had Low on your show. You know, you, you guys go way back. Everybody knows Low in Orlando. He's the man. He's got his hand in everything. He's just, he's phenomenal. Um, and ever since I partnered up with Low, it really kind of took off. So in a nutshell, we try to get about, 
you know, 50 to 60 quarterbacks from around the area of all ages. Um, you know, the same number of wide outs will bring them in and, and, and work them out, you know, from 9 a.m. to 12. And then those last three or four hours, we put them through a competition and we crown a top quarterback and a top receiver at the end. And they're kind of the, the big dog of, our, of the Central Florida, you know, scene after that event. So it's, it's pretty awesome. cool. And I'm looking forward to getting back down to doing it. Well, I'll tell you what, we've enjoyed having you on. This yes, is Coach. Sir, for having me. Oh, absolutely. Coach Colin Drafts, Nice Panthers head coach. You're watching the Florida Gridiron Report. We'll be back right after these messages. The Florida Gridiron Report is brought to you by Security Financial Management, Gators Dockside Grill, The 18 with Charles Ruttenberg Realty, and Sports Thread. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. Was building on the lecture versus coming daily under pressure. Working on the plot and the scheme. The true stock trademark is at the edge of your dreams. I'm talking one, one shot for the kill. The priest, the priest. Yes, sir. I'm turning dreams into reality in the lab with the formula. It can Sports Thread, and this is the new free Sports Thread app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout, and get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Welcome back to the Florida Grinner Report right here on Varsity Sports Network. Dan LaForest, Coach Kyle Hayes. Coach, what a show. I mean, Dan, I have to say it was an amazing show. First of all, we have a legend in Sammy Smith. Like I stated before, I will never forget him breaking that. Well, not breaking, but receiving his first 100-yard game. And then again, having a chance to catch back up with uh, Coach Colin Draft, uh, knowing that we did. You know, we battled a couple of times when he was at West Orange and being the head coach at East River. And it's great the chance that, you know, that on Friday nights for those three, four hours, man, you can't stand the guy. But when you get a chance to actually talk to him, man, you get to appreciate those people, man. So it was awesome. You know, it's so funny is, you know, Coach uh, Sammy and I go back since we were kids. You know, his mom was one of my teachers at Zellwood Elementary. But, you know, to watch his wow. career and and for those you know, the, you, you young high school players that don't know Sammy Smith, look him up on YouTube and watch his highlights. He was outstanding at Florida State. Uh, and, and you know, to, to, to see the work that he's doing now, giving back and making sure – that he's giving those life lessons back to these college kids and, and also the high school kids. He's just an outstanding person and, and, and I'm privileged to be a friend of his. Well, guys, this is it. Coach Hayes, we got to get ready for episode 20 and we got a big show next week. I'm not going to allude to anything yet, but we got a big one. You're watching a Florida Grand Report right here on Varsity Sports Network and we'll see you next Wednesday night. Hey.